Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to everyone. So glad to have you for worship today. And a special welcome to those joining us online as well. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to look over some of the announcements in the bulletin, but just to underline a couple. Next week, we have our first food truck of the year. So uh, that'll be on site from 10 to 1. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, for next week, you still have opportunities to sign up for the photo directory for Bethel. Uh, so please uh, avail yourself to that. And then I also wanted to mention uh, that Vacation Bible School registration is open. So uh, if you have uh, children or grandchildren in your life, I uh, encourage uh, you to register them for uh, VBS July 11 through 15. And Tom, I think, has a, a word to share. All I get is one word? Well, you can say more than one, yeah. Good. Good job. Okay, I'm done. Um, so, just wanted to, first of all, we have a little recap. Yesterday, we had about 20 of us who went sailing on the ocean blue. The ocean was blue. The skies were blue. Saw about half a dozen whales, uh, some of them actually pretty close. Uh, so, it was a wonderful event. So, if you're interested in our out and about events, uh, make sure you check out the uh, website. Our next one's going to be hiking over in, uh, over there. And then uh, the next one will be in Monterey uh, doing a whole bunch of things. Uh, also, if you got the e-news, you'll see that we're asking for uh, feedback from you. We're doing our first in-person uh, Labor Day retreat again this year, which we're super excited about. Have a team that's working on it. Our theme is fish out of water, which you'll find out more about, but it's going to be an amazing uh, weekend. So we're trying to get an idea how many people would like to attend, either for part or for the whole weekend. The Bethel bus will go again as well. So if you see the survey, there's just three questions, or two questions, are you gonna go? How many people do you think might come? And then uh, also, if you have any comments. If you're interested in helping us plan, we're meeting uh, next week, next Sunday, so be part of the team. It's a really great event, and those who get to plan have even more fun, so enjoy that. And now, even more fun, Dave's gonna talk about money. All right, I tried. When the treasurer stands up, you know there's trouble. Uh, you may have seen the notice in the E! News this week um, while our, from the Finance Committee. While our finances are in good shape, income is still a bit, a bit over expenses. We've had three months in a row of rather substantial uh, shortfall in contributions. So um, we're asking that if you're behind and you can catch up, um, that would be a good time to do that. And also remember, um, over the summer, if you're traveling, more people traveling these days, uh, don't forget to keep uh, your contributions coming in, because that really helps us uh, with planning and uh, paying the bills. So thank you. And thanks for all your support over, over, the, over the years. Especially this last year, we have, um, more than most churches, we have kept up with things and been able to do things financially that, that many churches have, have struggled with. So I really appreciate what we've been able to do and so let's just keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Well, we'll begin our worship by asking uh, you to join with me in our confession. And you may stand if you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make any distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same spirit that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Here ends the reading of the lesson. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to the book of John, chapter 13, verses 12 through 17, and 31 through 35. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had reclined again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, 
Slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God would also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. On his last night of his life, Jesus gathered with his disciples, and he knew that he was going to the cross, and he says to them, little children, I will be with you only a little longer. In that moment, we can sense the urgency of what Jesus has to share with his disciples. He tells them, love one another, just as I have loved you. A new command to love one another as I have loved you. There are many things Jesus could have said. So to underline the importance, we see that this command to love was the most important thing Jesus could say to them. Certainly his death and resurrection will speak a whole volume to the power of God, but in terms of how they should live, he says, love one another and do so in a way that when people see how you love, they will think you're a follower of Jesus. It sounds so simple, love one another, and yet it can be challenging, can it not, to love another person? How do we decide who we love? What limits do we put on the love that we share with someone else? Do we love those who love us back? What if a person doesn't love us? Do we stop loving them? In my own life, I've tried to wrap my head around the people whom I love that are sort of in my inner circle. And I have the inner circle of people in my life These are close family members. And I feel like if any need were arise for any of them, I would go to the end of the world and do everything that I could for them. And then there are people who might be outside of the inner circle that I also love that I would do a lot for but maybe not move heaven and earth. And then there are just other people who I care for, and if it's convenient to me, I might help, but I'm probably not going to go out of my way. That's as honest as I can probably be. But Jesus says, love as you have been loved. We see Jesus loving people who are not just in his group of friends. He shows love to the outcasts, the sinners, even his enemies. Even on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
So these words, this command to love, is one where I look at my own life and go, wow, I'm kind of limiting the love that I have been given to just a small group of people. I imagine that's what Peter felt when he had this vision, this vision of this animal, these animals being lowered down that were clearly unclean. There are all these dietary rules that a faithful Jewish person would keep. We might call it kosher today. Clean and unclean. And the Bible is very clear about which ones are clean and which ones are unclean. And so this vision says, Peter, kill and eat. And he says, I have never eaten anything profane. And the second time that voice from heaven said, what God has made clean cannot be called profane. This is not only about food, it's about people. Those same scriptures that talked about clean and unclean also talked about the uniqueness of the people of Israel, that they were specifically chosen by God, that God had a special covenant with this group that did not include outside groups. But here, as Peter and the other disciples are beginning the church, those boundaries, those limits on whom God has a loving relationship with, those boundaries have been removed. As Peter goes to meet with those Gentiles, he preaches and gives testimony to the good news, to Jesus' death and resurrection, and the Holy Spirit is stirred in their hearts, and they believe. In chapter 10, Peter says, I see God shows no partiality. And so in chapter 11 of Acts, Peter goes before the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and tells them his story and what had been done and how the Holy Spirit was at work not just in the Jewish Christians, but the Gentiles as well. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus has love for all people. Jesus came into this world not to erect new boundaries of who's in and who's out, but to erase all of them, to ensure that every person knows that they are loved by God, without exception. Every person. Human beings, we like to put up our boundaries. We like to make our lists of who's in, who's out. What criteria makes us worthy of love? God shows no partiality because God made each person. So can we imagine or reimagine our life with that same mindset? Because God's love knows no limit. Ours shouldn't either. Now, that doesn't mean that we have the capacity to love all people at all times. I mean, there are billions of people, and there are only 24 hours in our day. But it does mean the people that you meet, the people that you see, the people that you know, God loves them. If we claim to be followers of Jesus, we have to love them too. Not because they love us back, not because they're, they've earned it or deserve it, 
but for the very simple fact that God loves them. So how do we do that? Well, of course, Jesus gives us the example. As I said, it's the last night of his life. After they finished having their meal, Jesus washes their feet. Not uncommon in those days. Feet got very dirty walking outside. It was usually the job of the servant who might be hired for such an occasion. But Jesus, who is the teacher, the master, washes his disciples' feet. The kind of love that he shows and commands his followers to exhibit is a love that washes feet. A humble love. A love that's based in action and service to others. That nothing is beneath us. Nothing is too dirty or stinky for us to show love to one another. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. May we do so without limit, without exception. Amen. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, seventh under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
we now offer prayers of intercession. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to serve and help the people who most need their attention and turn them from temptations to crave and hoard wealth and power. Lead them to speak to seek peace both internally and internationally with other countries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress of any kind. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with and strengthen those experiencing despair or in great need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place holy love at the center of our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism and prejudice of all kinds in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show to one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now offer prayers for members, family, and friends of Bethel. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for Angela Brown for recent successful surgery, and we pray for continued healing during continuing treatment in the months ahead. We pray for continued healing and recovery for Merle Sandwich from knee surgery. We pray, we pray for healing and improved health for Pamela Maloney. We pray for Eric Baldwin for strength and for healing and for ongoing recovery after surgery. We offer prayers for Jim Elliott for strength and resilience as his medical team works to find the cause of his erythroderma. And we further pray for Sue Lampkin in her role as caregiver. We pray for continuing successful recovery for Terry Holst after skin cancer treatment. We offer prayers for Gareth Jones, brother-in-law of Maryam, Marianne Jones, facing surgery this month after reappearance of cancer. Dear God, we ask for your presence and for comfort in facing a difficult prognosis for Madeline, friend of Marilyn Gar Garten. We pray for healing and comfort for Susan, friend of Lynn Stassi. We ask for healing and recovery for Barbara Chicks, mother of Catherine Montano. And we pray for a successful Mohs surgery and recovery for Chuck Chicks, father of Catherine Montano. We pray for Garth Jones as he prepares for surgery this month for return cancer. We pray for your presence and for comfort for Madeline, friend of Marilyn Garten. We pray for Adele Lawrence, who is undergoing radiation treatments for cancer. Dear Lord, we pray for Adam, son-in-law of Sue Lampkin, and his medical team as he receives radiation and chemo treatment before surgery. We pray for the family's strength, endurance, and resilience now and during the treatment ahead. We pray for Shirley LeBlanc, friend of Betty Dombrowski, as she fights cancer. <clears throat> we pray for your comforting presence, O oh God, and for peace for Helen, Brenda 
Shia Han's mother. And we pray for Helen's full-time caregivers, Brenda and Jerry. We pray for Adele Lawrence, mother of Steve Lawrence, who is receiving radiation treatment. We pray for Lita Sarah, recovering from recent knee replacement surgery. We pray for Karen Hansen for successful chemotherapy treatment to send the cancer into remission. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and all the silent prayers offered here today. Renew us and lead us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the offering.
us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You to rise and receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Resounding in glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever. Oh, what a miracle God has in sight! He the risen, and we shall arise. Give God the glory. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.